have a fantastic speaker. Now, it's maybe wrong to call him speaker because he is a artist, a sketcher, a drawer. I first met him personally in Berlin about a year ago. Started working together about seven months ago. And today it is awesome, really awesome, to see what happens when you bring a visual strategy facilitator into the strategy process. Kristen talked about this earlier. Now you'll get to experience it firsthand. Please welcome the world's coolest visual strategy facilitator, Holger. Uh, thank you, Christian. Um, is it working well? Can you hear me? Yeah. Fine. Yeah, hello. Um, Christian forgot to mention what he should mention. Um, you have a present from him at your table. Um, it's a including a sketchbook and uh, a few pens. And uh, it's done by me, the pen's not, but the sketchbook. I designed the sketchbook and it's produced completely in Cologne, handmade. The stamps on the, on the cover are handmade by me, myself, so you have an individual one. Um, and this should help you work more visual. So I use these uh, sketchbooks a lot in my workshops where I teach people to draw a little bit like me. Um, sometimes it works out. And I, I always uh, want to give uh, my favorite pens with it. So just to explain in short terms what you have there. These are all my favorites. I can't decide which one is best, but perhaps one. So if you're working on a flip chart with, it, with your team or uh, with just one colleague, I would use this big orange one for the outlines, for writing, for drawing, sketching out. It's a permanent marker, so everything you do on top will not bleed or smudge. And then you have these two black big ones. It's a gray and an orange. The orange one is for coloring, for example. As you see, I used here the blue one uh, for the people. You could use an orange one, it's really nice. And the gray one is for the shadows. If you go nearer later on or so, you see that I put shadows on the side of the objects. That's why I'm using this gray one. So this is working on a flip chart or even a bigger paper. And then I have a special one. This is the adding one to five five uh, it's a calligraphy pen and i like it very much to do my personal outlines when i'm doing the graphic recordings it's like you have a nice dynamic in lines when you're drawing lines with it and you can write really nicely with it the disadvantage of this i sometimes put it out of the set and then put it back again because people want to have it it's uh, fading out very fast so you can't use it a really long as it is now in the when it's new so I use up to 10 pens per day when I'm working as a graphic recorder. And then I have this one. This is an outliner too. Smaller one you could use this in, in a sketchbook or on A4 charts or A3 charts. It's permanent again, the orange one. And you can refill it. Then you have these th three one slightly transparent. And these are the ones I have always in my pocket for the sketchbook. They are slightly not, not so easy to use sometimes because they tend to smudge too because they are not so fast in drying, but they make really nice lines and you have two colors and the black one for the lines. These are ones I I'm using in my sketchbooks a lot. And then perhaps th this is my favorite pen because this is the first ever made uh, marker um, that is, was produced on the world. So it's pencil. It's the nicest design I've ever seen. Um, <coughs> and this is, yeah, this is the combination of pens, and you could easily test them on paper or in the sketchbook directly how they work. Uh, enjoy, and please use them extensively to start working visual. I, I really would like to see that. Um, I want to tell you something about me in the in the beginning, and then give you some some experiences I made uh, working around the world with uh, big and small companies in working visual um, and even feedback here what I saw here in in the first half of the day so when it comes to me just uh, a short introduction I first thought uh, I would be perhaps an architect and I go studying architecture but uh, it was like falling down very very deep falling down because it was not that 
what I wanted to do. It was not creative and I didn't know what, I, what to do now. And then I just decided to be a carpenter and I learned to be a carpenter and build furniture like this wonderful table. And then after that I thought, okay, this, this is not enough. Perhaps um, I be a designer and find new ideas to design the world. Would be very nice to design the world. And um, directly in 2009, I go in, uh, got into the self-employee status and started to work with agencies. And uh, it developed that everything I did was about drawing. This is a cool pen. Um, was about drawing. And somebody said, hey, you should make more out of it. You could do graphic recordings, graphic facilitation. And this is how it evolved then that I'm here now as a visual strategy facilitator for some years. Um, this is what I'm doing for a living. And that's my, my way uh, where I came from. And I would recommend and ask you to do now in the next uh, just two minutes, grab your neighbor on the table. You have, a, you have two sides in your sketchbook where you can tell your story with just one line as I just did. If, you thr if you're three people, at the table, just one, one is telling, the others are listening. And if, if you're four, please turn to your neighbor and just one person explains the other where he's coming from, what he's doing or what he's passionate about in just one line. You have two minutes and then it's done. It's just a spontaneous thing. Would you do this, please? If you would listen to me uh, back again, you are really engaged, that's cool. <laughs> Difficult to g get the attention back, that's very good. What I, what I see here from, from the top here is that you begin to, uh, to smile while talking and that the one you are talking to is really concentrated on what you're doing and this is something visual working and working visual is very good for. So on the first hand, creating emotions, and on the second hand, creating attention. Um, this is really, really nice, and this is a nice exercise to get just known to each other and to, to warm up in, uh, in drawing. So, um, I always show the following picture to everyone talking about working visual. This is drawn by my daughter uh, when she was nearly two, and it was, she told me, hey, see, I drew a zebra. Zebra. You know what? And I thought, this is genius, because there is nothing more to say about this animal. Nothing more. And uh, if I would have told you to draw it, you would probably begin to draw a horse, and l afterwards try to make some stripes in it. But there is no horse, there are only the stripes. Nothing else is needed. And uh, this says that children can really good work visual because they don't have the fear that they could do something wrong. And um, you should overcome this. So children see the world really different. And um, when I'm teaching, I always try to get the people back to see like children see the world and not in a foolish way or like many people say sometimes like yeah you have to play more you have to do this more that more like children no children tend to see things like they are and they tend to see the important aspects of the objects that are surrounding them and if you if you begin to think like a child like a child um, and see a table not in perspective, but just from the front, for example, or if you see a light bulb, not in a three-dimensional way, but in a circle that has something underneath, then you're really fast there working more visual with easy drawings. 
this is something very powerful. Um, so the problem is that our brain is very complex and there is a big, big entry barrier, to, so to say, uh, to visual working. And this is that we have our right half of the brain that is working visual, that is working creative. Every time we are creative, right brain of the uh, right half of the brain is working. And when we are talking or thinking logic, it's the left, left side of the brain. So when you begin to draw and try to talk, there will be a moment when you can't talk anymore because you're drawing and you can't concentrate on the talking. That sometimes, like when I'm doing the graphic recording, someone's asking me something and I just don't react. So like, <coughs> I can't speak. Uh, this is when the right, right half of the brain is active more. That is a really barrier to entrance um, in working visual, but, but it's worth it to train some sketches and some visuals that you just use very often that you don't have to think about and just use it again and again and again and again. Um, then you will overcome that. And you will overcome the, the thing about uh, understanding. Uh, when you're talking to other people, you always think that they understand you, but it isn't like that. So we had uh, in a client workshop the last days this phrase, uh, you think they understand what, they s what you say, but they don't. And it's, it's really the case. It's really difficult to understand what people say if you don't see anything to that. And it's even not easy to remember. So cognitive science found out that uh, when you read something, you can remember 10%, 10% only of reading. You can remember 20% when somebody tells you what you read. And you can remember 30% when you see something. 30% is even not so much. But if you combine everything, so writing, talking, and drawing and seeing, you have 70% of amount of information you can remember afterwards. That's really powerful. So, and it's cognitive science, so we should go for that. And then you might remember this, perhaps only this one, perhaps only right, right top of this one slide of my speech, but it might stick and everybody can understand. Even if there is something in German written down, um, everybody of you could get the idea of um, it's not, I'm not so sure if banking is really cool. Sorry. <laughs> um, I've done this, this drawing yesterday, and it's uh, two reasons why I put it here. So I could easily explain you why, uh, what is important if you want to reach the Russian market. Um, I would not do that yet now. And I could point you to the, to the guy who's laying there over, over on the top keep calm, this is Russia. It's not meant to be an afford to Russians, but it's meant to be the laziness, like he's laying there. That's uh, something why, why a lot of people don't work visual. It's kind of easy to not work visual because you can lay down. You can lay behind, you can just let others speak. You don't have to commit to something. You can say, yeah, let's discuss about that. And then you can switch to the next topic and the other topic is fading away. But if you work visual, you generate commitment because you have to nod it down on the wall. You have to write it down. You have to say, are we all in the same boat here? Are we talking the same? Or is there someone who has something, a different meaning to that? So it's much more, to so to say, it's not so easy to work visual like just to talk because you could just blah, 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 and that would be fine. Um, I want to share you how some of my clients, uh, share with you how some of my clients work uh, visual. I will tell a lot of story because there are no photos of that um, regarding non, non nah, yeah, I forget the word, but I will tell the, the stories. Um, but before I want to show this, this is a recording of today and the bottom of that. Um, I saw when people work, for example, at this canvas here, drawing um, a submarine and so on, people were really engaged, like, like the right, right hand. 
I saw a lot of people, a lot of participants here, a lot of you just talking and um, standing on the canvases and just not writing something down. You will not create this engagement like you would have if you would have put something down. You're just talking about topics and topics and topics and don't come to the point. You don't come to the point. I really want to recommend to you that you just, if even if you're not sketch or draw, please write something down. That would be fine too. Writing is also kind of visual thinking. If you use templates like these and write something on it, it's visual thinking as well. So it's not easy, as you see here, um, but I think it's worth training. I can't make you here working more visual. I just can recommend it to you. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not possible, but uh, if you train it, or if you just have it in mind, or like Christian perhaps, um, Christian is someone who's adapted very fast, but he's now thinking in visuals, so he can even say, oh, I know, I don't know, I can't draw it, but I have in mind this and that and that, and then it's going further. It's going further and further, and perhaps it's slipping in the language, more visuals in the language, and that's the first step. And you will see that the others you're talking about uh, with and you're developing new management strategies or new company strategies, they are will be deeply involved. Deeply involved and they will be focused. Um, other example I did was drawing 110 A6 cards in one day for an innovation workshop. So they had 110 ideas on cards. I wonder how many ideas you would have if you just would have written down everything you talked about today. Um, or 60 cards of presentation slides, just A6 cards. Or here, as example, Alexander Osterwalder, you talked about the business model canvas. He does it all the time. He has two big slides, very visual presentations. He's, you see he's using Statis as well on a big board at his presentations. And I'm, I'm there with the iPad and the people really have multi-channels to get the idea. And that's really powerful. Um, and it's not slower as you perhaps experienced now. Um, working visual sometimes has the feeling that everything is a little bit slower because you can't talk so fast. Yeah? You have 10 ideas and you would shout it away. But if you would draw it, it lasts longer. But it saves time any anyway because you would have not so many discussions. You would have faster decisions. You would have com commitment for the next steps. So to fast for fast ex execution, would be everything will be, will be faster. You will save time with working visual. Um, and sometimes it's helpful just not to talk. Sometimes I do graphic recording on the big screen like I did today and I would not draw anything for 10 minutes because they are only talking about nonsense. And people are getting the idea. After one day working with me, they say, hmm, he's not drawing anything, might be we don't talk about content here. You know, that is really cool. And I see a lot of people getting the idea. Or you could present your business model and the business model canvas more visual, like this. This is much more easier to tell other people what you tend to do than if you just would talk. And you can work visual everywhere. You know, on the roof, in Berlin, for example. And on the wall, this is the wall in my office. Another recommendation, put everything on the wall. I like printing even if it's not so sustainable, but I think you have to see everything you talk about. So I, this is only one project of mine. So not different project, one project. And I would put it on the wall to see everything at once. It's very powerful to see everything at once. It's like having a big room and working on everything. Creating walls where, can you, where you can draw on. Some clients of mine do create walls where you can draw on. That's really powerful. And don't think you can't draw again. There are 
small little demons in your head that say you can't draw. Or what might the others think when I'm drawing some stupid stuff? It is always cool to draw, even if it's just a stick figure or it's just a circle or something. It's always cool. No one will, will think you're stupid. Yeah? Um, I see a lot of people in my workshops growing beyond what they thought could be very, very, very fast. If you just try to train and try to implement some simple things, perhaps just containers around your text, um, like you see on the paper there, just to structure what you write might be visual enough or train some simple uh, faces, very simple. Um, and then everything goes down, and this is what working visual is all about, as I talked about in the beginning, it's emotions. I always, I'm always happy when I see people begin smiling. I have the experience very often that people, when they, in workshops, like we had uh, a, few uh, a d few days ago, the workshop, try um, begin to smile when they present because you know I have this drawing it's a little bit e but it it's a submarine and everyone yeah this is a submarine get yeah, cool and they begin to talk it really begin to engage people it's all about emotions if you get the people by their emotions you will get their engagement and their commitment it doesn't matter how it looks like and it will end up in something like this visual library of a client and a, and a way through their process and they worked all over the floor and everywhere it was, it was totally great. Or it could end like this. This is a visual contract. Stato could, th could think of visual contracts, I think. Um, this is a contract about a film I made in a, in a restaurant with a client. We draw down the sketchbook and he signed there. It was really good. Um, or what, what, what would happen if you implement new techniques, the newest technologies in your working day life? Um, Viking is spread all over. What would happen if you implement live streaming in your workshops? Yeah. Like we did here for Cyprus, you could do it easily for your own, not so technique, high technique performance, but even that. In this case, I worked for Cyprus, drawn in Cologne and displayed on big screens beside the, sc bit, m beside the speakers. It was really nice to see and it needed some technique to cut the video filming and so on. But what would be possible for you to, to get the people that are spread around the world together working more visual? There are possibilities. And if just it could be only the screen sharing. <laughs> And I hope you can see that it is possible to, to do some fast sketches. You could try something out, out of the sketchbook. I if you stay for dinner, we could just work in the sketchbook together and create some visuals. I would be happy to. Um, and it not depends on how fast you are. Perhaps you're not so fast, perhaps you're flying like Superman. You know, it's not important. The effect will be like this, every time. Every time you draw something, this will be the effect. I promise. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to end this talk with uh, a visual I created for a business partner of mine. And this is um, something I think related to you very well and very near. Um, why don't you fix the fence? I'm too busy chasing chickens. <laughs> Think about this while working on your strategy, while thinking about, ah, it's too difficult. We have to execute, we have the operations going on, and so on, and so on, and so on. This you should remember at least this slide of my talk. Um, you have to take your time for innovation, for strategic meetings, and to train some more visual working. And um, I would like to stay in contact with you and discuss how you can implement that. I'm very open to that. 
Again, if you stay for dinner, I would love to create some visuals with you to get together in the sketchbook. Um, will be very funny and cool. And yeah, thanks. And I hope you can implement something directly tomorrow.